Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts, Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doug Dunbar. We, we're back, kids. We're back. We're back. We're back. back in action. Our, our little summer vacation. Yeah, that was nice. Summer we, uh, vacay. I didn't have to see Karen. I mean, Doug for a couple weeks. <laughs> oh, we well, it's, uh, it's hard to believe it's already the 31st of July and tomorrow's August 1st. I know. Wow. But hey, we have baseball season in full swing now. We got baseball. I love it. And the tribe is doing well. It's a little weird with cardboard cutouts and yeah. fake crowd noise, but I'll take it. I'll yeah. Take it. And they had the fake crowd in Minnesota last night too. That was weird. I actually weird. thought people were in the stands, and then the next camera shot would come on, and it was yeah. like blank. There was nobody. It there. wasn't only a crowd. It was like if it was uh, opening day or the World Series. Like every seat was filled on some camera views, but then they'd go to a different camera view and there's nobody there. It was so, so crazy. It was very weird. So uh, why, why even bother? They're going to a lot of extremes. You know, it's interesting. Every team, every broadcast seems to be a little bit different about what they're doing. But, but hey, I'll take it. Uh, Tribe's doing well. Pitching looks great. Bieber is and, on fire. Well, everybody looked like an ace on the first time through our... Uh, our rotation, so I'll, you know. Anyway, it's very promising. Yeah. Awesome. Looks good. This will be our year to win the World Series, and then we'll have we'll, an asterisk we'll always, yeah, we'll win behind an our name for anyway, ever. I'd still take it rather than no World Series. This is true. This is true. We won't yeah. get, we won't get uh, the uh, recognition anyway because they'll say, well, it was a short year, and people get a chance to develop, and, you know, that's how things work with Cleveland. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to all you non- Cleveland viewers out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you haven't been through what we've been through. Right. It's been a hard struggle. So, in fact, I'm surprised you don't have it on your phone already there, Karen. Uh, you well, know, you know, I can only do so many things I at know, one time. I know. It's asking a lot. I know. Um, anybody drinking a good whiskey over the last uh, couple of weeks? Um, okay. Anybody acquire <laughs> any? You did. You had the Woodford Double Oak. You had that last yeah. week. Yeah, can you give me a bottle? <laughs> Doug, right behind that thing there. Do you mind? You really like that. So I obviously. didn't, honest to God, honest to God, Karen will tell you, uh, we had a lot going on, uh, graduation party and uh, um, birthday that, party, Karen. the whole nine yards. And uh, I said to myself last last weekend, I said, you know what? I said I, self? I said to myself, self? <laughs> self, listen, you ain't paying attention. That's why you didn't get to the third grade. <laughs> but anyway, um, I didn't drink. I literally didn't drink. I really didn't. So at I a like, graduation party? Not even at the graduation well, party. That's okay. I, I drank for both of us. That's a whole. That's a whole different story. So I take, I take a Buffalo Trace single barrel, over to uh, my cousins, and uh, I did a, uh, a a monkey shoulder, over to my cousins as well, and uh, he saw what I brought over, and he uh, says, "Gee, uh, this is going home with me." I was like, well, I kind of brought that for us to drink. And he's kind of like, well, you're going to have to find something else. So, <laughs> anyway, that's how the black folk is, just so you know. Oh, stop. <laughs> he's whiter than your shirt. What are you talking about? Well, Come he on. should be black. But anyway, uh, so I didn't drink there either, but we smoked cigars. And it was nice hanging out with uh, uh, a bunch of guys that I can't talk about. But uh, uh, A bunch was, of was, Serbians and Croatians, uh, those crazy people. Yeah. So we'll just right. leave it at that. But anyway, so I didn't drink. So last Saturday, were they, were they drinking Slivovitz? Oh they, God, yeah. they did. I didn't, but I was good. That was I a rhetorical did. question. So and then uh, that was on Saturday, and then on Sunday was uh, uh, Goran uh, from the Schnitzel <coughs> Das Schnitzel has. It was his his granddaughter's first birthday. She's so sweet. Oh my God, is she cute? She is a she is unbelievably cute. Oh my God. So uh, we were out there for the uh, party and. Uh, um, I guess I have to say I, I didn't drink there either, except for I don't know a bottle and a half of Schlievitz. That's but, all. Uh, Nothing much. We had a good time, and the food was fantastic as always, and always a good get together when you get with Goran. It's always fun. Good so, eye. so then uh, this past weekend, um, I said to myself, self, and uh, <laughs> I got to go get some firewood. So I did a little cookout. You know, just I don't know. It was probably I don't know maybe six people, and. Uh, I decided to get a bottle of Woodford Reserve, and uh, anyway, at the end of the day, there was just me drinking it. Which camera are we on? Um, right now, we are on that one. Okay. So, you want me to move to the other one? Uh, we'll get the gist. That's what's left out of that bottle for me drinking last Saturday. <laughs> oh, okay. So you made up for the 
<laughs> that's it. And that's uh, going into no the uh, infinity bottle. I already some of that already went into the infinity bottle. Which I'm reminds on, me, that will be a future whiskey wizard episode. That will be. So um, you might want. You have an infinity bottle, don't you? Yes, I do. Right, so why don't you take the rest of that home and uh, pour a little shot glass and dump it in your I infinity bottle. I will do bottle, that. So I'll do that. So I have two infinity bottles done now. Oh wow! So well then, I'm going to uh, be working on. I'm trying to get six by by <clears> Christmas. <throat> So, what? okay, I have an idea, but we'll talk about it Six later. Six by um, Christmas? Six infinity yeah. bottles by Christmas. We got a lot of work to do. Amen. So, uh, we just spent the last week at the beach, just hanging out under an umbrella, looking at the crashing waves and mm -hmm. reading a book and back, you know, just getting in some good relaxed time. Um, you know, so I started reading this really good book on anti-gravity. Okay. It was very really interesting. Was I, I could, in the book? I couldn't put it down. I mean, I'm kind of into Oh, you didn't even get it. What was the joke? What did it say? Yeah. What did it miss? Nothing. I, I, so what are you smoking, G? <laughs> Anti-gravity? It was a great book. He couldn't put it down. You are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he might be a wizard, but he is stupid as a mother. <laughs> but anyway... Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Kill what are you me. smoking? I am smoking uh, a Royal Havana uh, habanero. Habanero. Jesus habanero. Christ! <laughs> it's my fault. I took oh him to the brewery God. today. I did. I don't, and I don't drink beer, so I drink like I don't know four or five little beers. It's like this glass kind of thing. But uh, uh, yeah, right. Royal Havana cigar, seven seventy. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I had a little beer while we were just while we would hang at the beach, and it, you know, nice cold lager really hits the spot when you're just hanging out in the hot sun. And, nice. But uh, yeah, that's probably the. See any bikinis out there? Oh, none at all. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't notice. Yeah, he was with his wife. His eyes were all on her. Oh, Did look you, at him drinking. Were you wearing your man hammock out there? <laughs> oh. I got yeah, my, my Speedos. Nice. That's all, I, that's all I wear. <laughs> European style. Go here. It's a banana hammock. Yeah. Sometimes I turn mine around and go strutting through the beach. Get a lot of attention. I love it. Yeah. Imagine that visual. People, okay. give, people give me money. Oh, yeah. Put a towel around. To go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm like, hey, can you help a guy in need, please? Here, here's $5. Can you get the hell out They look of at you? my Speedo and they go, that guy needs some fucking help. <laughs> He's going home by himself. Right, have some cash. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. So, well, it's, uh, so who's on? Who's watching us today? Uh, Jennifer Boggs is out there. Jennifer. Jennifer. Right. Girl, girl. She said yeah. uh, Woodford Double Pack is one of my favorites. She picked up the Ohio release this week. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. I got, uh, I got both releases on a tip. So uh, I was able to uh, score both of those, which was nice. I wasn't even trying, but that's great. I appreciate uh, the guy who took care of me. Thank you. Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. Hey, Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. Yeah. Exactly right. So uh, One of our sponsors. Benjamin Wright from uh, uh, Bounty Hunter Whiskey. Uh, it's an online uh, whiskey store that, uh, you know, like Ace Spirits or, you know, Third Base or any of those. Um uh, Actually, had a long chat with him today. I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Benjamin. Ben, thanks. I appreciate uh, appreciate what you did for me. Thank you very much. And uh, we will definitely, definitely be doing business. Your prices are perfect. They're right in line with everybody else. So uh, um, I appreciate what you did for me today and, and our future uh, relationship. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You'll be dragging out to the west side more often now, won't you? No, this guy's from California. Oh, okay. I thought because you went out to the west side. I did. That morning. was that was my uh, my Cleveland Burma Co-op tip to uh, get there early in the morning, and I did, and it was uh, quite uh, helpful. I appreciate that. I don't want to mention any names because you know how sometimes people can be. So, <clears throat> I'll leave it at that. So that's all, all right. we got, kids. So we're doing a got a special whiskey tonight. We do. We do. We've got the Angels Envy. Which uh, I know this is Sidecar's favorite, and he is so sad that he couldn't be <coughs> here with us tonight. But that's okay, Sidecar. We're drinking it without you. We we miss you, Sidecar. We miss you like a toothache. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> See you up at Buffalo. 
He yeah, is. he is in Buffalo. Yeah. So. Sidecar <clears throat> moved to Buffalo. So, well, technically we backed, returned to Buffalo. There right? you go. Yep, yeah. went back. And all he does is brag about how good the chicken wings are. He always brags about Buffalo. DiCamillo's bread <coughs> and chicken wings and pizza, but he ain't bringing them back here. So. That's right. I don't know what that is all about, but anyway, he's lazy anyway. He's sidecar. He's sidecar. You know? What are you going to do? Yeah. He's like a little like girl. But that's okay. We're getting back at him because we're doing Angel's Envy, and he's not here. <laughs> so tell us about this uh, Angel's Envy ride. Let's hear about it. What do we got here? You want me to what go we... right into it? No, just tell what's, what, Just give us a little taste here of what that in particular bottle is. What is that in particular bottle? Can I steal it from you? Yeah, you could sit. Wait, where are you going? You gonna take it to the camera, or are you just? Reading? I will. Rye whiskey finished in Caribbean rum cast barrels, hundred proof. Which camera are we on? Um, we are on one closest Straight to away. you. The good. Yep. Uh, down a little. There you go. Up and up a little. Woo. <laughs> there, Woo. there. 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 Okay. That's Whoop! Good. Right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, um, we have uh, we have a couple Angels Envy products that uh, were rare releases that that are very very good, <clears throat> and uh, maybe one day we could uh, pull a couple of those out of the uh, moss and uh, dust them off and uh, do a couple of those. I, I I drink a regular one of those in the same exact cast and. Uh, I'll never forget it was Christmas Day and I... Is that the present I bought you? Yes, and me and Albert, me and Albert, um, uh, Albert Santilli, one of the guys used to be with the Whiskey Round Table, still is, so to say, and... Uh, He'll be here. He's an old he's friend of do, the show. Yeah, he's an old friend, and he's going to do... Uh, we, he actually reached out. Uh, I want to get him on for Scotch Month, and uh, he's all into it. Okay. And uh, it's a North Coast Jazz Ensemble, and uh, he's been traveling and doing a lot of... Music and that's been very good. Good deal. And uh, me and him killed that whole bottle on Christmas. It was so good. It's like it's like that good milkshake. You it know should what have saying? been good for what I paid that for. That good it. milkshake and you just keep drinking it and drinking it and drinking it and the next thing you know, um, you can't walk, and the bottle's empty. So I mean that's. Uh, I'm hoping that 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 is the same kind of product. So, so. I had bought this for him for Christmas and I, um, I knew that they had gone out that night. And I woke up the next morning, and I'm like, how was that? He goes, oh, it was so good. I'm, Can I try some? He goes, it's gone. I go, what do you yeah, mean it's gone? It's, I didn't realize what it was. That's a whole Can I tell that story? Yes. Do you mind? No. So, tell the story. So I dropped my father off. Uh, we were at Derek, Derek uh, Rolling Smoke Barbecue. We were at Derek's in uh, <coughs> Jenny's house, Polarcheck. And uh, we go there every year for Christmas. And uh, uh, we end up leaving there. We take my father home. And I dropped Karen off, and uh, Jenny and Karen got all tore up, and uh, uh, I took my father home. And then uh, a friend of mine uh, wanted us to come over for Christmas Day to, to, to hang out with the family. So I, before I left, I took that, Karen gave me that bottle a couple of days before Christmas, and uh, I put it in my father's wine rack. And uh, before we left, I said, Dad, I'm going to grab that bottle of Angel's Envy. He says, hey, take me, help yourself, you know. So I went and grabbed that bottle. And uh, me and Albert didn't, I never read the bottle. I never read the bottle. We just, we got to Tom's house, and we got into that bottle. And Tom's brother-in-law is a, is a uh, um, big bourbon and scotch guy. And uh, we started, we got into that bottle, and we drank that whole freaking bottle, which I was just telling him. So at the end of the day, the next day, um, Karen, I told us, man, that Angel's Envy you got me was really good. And she's like, oh, I'd like to try it. I'm like, oh, it's gone. So it's gone. I said, yeah. She goes, you drank the whole bottle? I said, well, I mean, it was a you know, team effort. But, you know, we did. We killed the whole bottle. And uh, I said, that's probably one of the best bourbons I've ever had. It was that freaking good. And she says, that was... The two hundred dollar bottle of their limited release. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> really? That's why it was so good. So awesome, man! I tell you what. So, thankfully, I was lucky to fall into a couple more bottles. But uh, at the end of the day, it was it was a, a great, great, great bottle. It really was. But we had a good time. 
It's all about sharing, right? Is that right? Yeah, sure. well, you know, and I always give you flack because you, like, get stuff and then you don't touch it. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you actually drank it. So I have so. a couple more to drink, but I'm just kind of waiting for now. I know that was two years ago, but we're still waiting. But what are anyway. you waiting for? You know, something else might come out. You never know. Oh, for the love of Pete. Yeah, leave Pete out of it. You don't know. Who's Pete, anyway? I don't know. He does gyros. Wait, that's... Oh, that's right. He does do gyros. We'll get, we'll hey, get Pete. hey, Pete. And Leg of Lamb. We'll get into Pete song. and uh, Scotch Whiskey Month. There we go. Pete will come hang out. So I, gotta, yeah. I have I have some people that uh, reached out to me in the last two weeks. Uh, Ray on wanting to come back. Oh, yay. Do Good. a cameo. And um, we got Gary Coe wants to come back. And uh, um, Albert wants to come back, do a show. So, I mean, we might be booked for the whole month of... Uh, well, just, um, I, no, we were at the beach with go ahead. Chris Snyder and his right. okay. wife, Laura, and right. Tim Serva and his wife, Beverly. But uh, Chris is going to come, and uh, he's going to come and do a show in August. So we'll that, oh, cool. That, that would be awesome. We'll have to coordinate that, but because it is Scotch Whiskey Month, I think we are uh, I think we got him agreed to come and do it maybe on the, is it the 14th? Yeah, that's Nothing a Friday. Confirmed. Nothing okay. confirmed, but that's uh -huh. that's where we're. Okay. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll get that figured out. So Angels Envy Rye finished. Right. Um, you got some stuff to tell us about it, Karen? I have a little bit of stuff. You know, it's it's so hard to find information about some of these bourbons, but I tried to piece together some things. So bear with me as I'm going through this. But um, Angels Envy was built. Uh, by master distiller Lincoln Henderson and he initially worked at Brown Foreman and created a lot of pretty notable brands um, including Woodford Reserve and Gentleman Jack and he came out of retirement to create Angels Envy with his son Wes and um, they created it in port barrels and he had always had this idea for years, but he never had the chance to actually put it together until he came out of retirement. Um, so, so to finish it in Port Bryce. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, and what he said is, the so you've heard of the angel's share, which is the 5% of the spirit that's lost during the barrel aging. But he said after tasting the finished whiskey, he joked, this is Lincoln Henderson joked, that he'd finally gotten a better deal than the Angels. <laughs> so that's that's where Angels Envy comes from. Nice. So uh, let's see, just kind of scrolling through here. So a fun story, Lincoln and his brother attempted to borrow an airplane from a remote Alaskan airfield when he was just 12 years old. <laughs> but uh, thankfully for our whiskey fans everywhere, they crashed it into the hangar before they actually got it airborne. So <laughs> we actually, oh, yeah. uh, we, we get to uh, live on and- And they're still in comas from their ass whooping? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know, he wasn't your child, but <laughs> he <God>. was. <laughs> Because he'd still be laying in that hospital bed. But anyway, I am yeah. telling you what, he would not have, uh, he, he would have been sorry that he crashed it into the hangar. He'd have been like, man, my dad's going to kill me. Mm-hmm. Unless Uncle Greg gets there first. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. That is funny. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, I don't have a whole lot, but I can go into the, unless you have something, Doug. You well, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's a rye whiskey, obviously. It's 95% uh, rye, 5% malted barley. So it's absent any corn. So, uh, so that's somewhat unique. Um, it is unique. And uh, it's about a, what, a $70, $80 price point? Yeah, it's, like it's, it's close to 90 bucks. It's, sure. yeah. it's hard to find Angel's Envy anymore, isn't it? <clears throat> it, it? It is a little bit scarce on the shelves today. Um, I've had that bottle for a couple of years. Um, decided, you know, you know, before we you took our break, um, you know, decided let's, let's open it up and try it out. I heard it's fantastic. I've never had it. I don't it's, know a lot about it. I, I never studied it because, just, yeah. just because. But, well, um, six-year aging. Okay. And uh, of course, then it's 
18 months in um, X rum cask. So um, that that'll be quite interesting, I think. Bob and that's bottled at 50% ABV. Okay. So, yeah, so, and this was just recent. They were just recently bought out by Bacardi. Yeah, that's what we heard. I, you know, like I was saying, they also have some kind of a lawsuit because it's like, distilled in Indiana and then they age it in Kentucky. So there's some kind of class action because it's about false advertising or something. Oh dear. But, well, we won't get but, into that. I mean, that. yeah. Who? But who really cares? I mean, no, right. I don't right. care. We yeah, have I, We care about what the finished product is and that's made honestly. You know, we don't like a lot of coloring and flavorings and additives and stuff like that, but but I don't think there's anything like that going on I here. I hope so. not. I mean, that's what I was so disappointed because I used to like, uh, I, one of my favorite rides was Templeton. And then to find out that Templeton wasn't all it was supposed to be. And they had all these extra food colorings and all oh. this stuff, and I'm like, really? I mean, the first time I ever saw it, I'm not going to lie to you, the first time I ever saw it, Cause I, I I can't I think it was Steve that uh, my brother Stephen from Texas if you're watching bro, um, it, he turned me on to it I'm like man this this is fan and it is it's fantastic, but then we come to find out that uh, you know it isn't what it is you know it's you know they have it's blended it's got food coloring and it, it's you know all this different additives and all this stuff and and it, I'm like kind of set back so now I don't even drink it anymore. It's like, you know, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's like, you know what? Uh, yeah, I do, mean, do like the rest of the people did back in the day. I do think it the right uh, way. You can, yeah. make it, you can make a decent uh, Man Manhattan, Manhattan with it. But, yeah. but since I, you know, learned a little bit more about it, it's not it's one of my go-tos. But. It's hard once you learn that it's, right. you know. Yeah. Is it? Do we got any more? Or are you going to just... Um, I was just going to say, with the Angel's Envy... The rye. It spends up to 18 months finishing in Caribbean rum cask, resulting in an immensely complex whiskey, the mingling of raw, spicy, and earthy rye with a mellow sweetness of rum. Finishing creates an incomparably smooth and drinkable whiskey, even at 100 proof. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm looking forward to trying it. I'm too. I'm definitely am too. So we're going to pass this out? We can, sure. One for you. One for me. So we got the uh, Polarchuk family uh, watching today. All right, Derek and Jenny and uh, her sister and uh, brother-in-law. So, Woo -woo. Uh, hey kids. What's up, kids? Pat Patterson hey. is back. Patty. Pat Patterson, what's up? All right. Hola, very drunk friend of the show. <laughs> 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 he played a very respectful round of golf today. 81, right. but nine right. beers and a smoke. Dude, that is That is, is not bad for putt-putt. Pat, putt, were there any... <laughs> <laughs> Pat, was there, oh, at least, boy. was there at least one club drop? And did you get through the windmill? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I played with him, yeah. He'll, he'll make a great hit and do the club drop. Oh, He's a goodness. character. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. I got three on the windmill, but <laughs> six on Winnie the Pooh, the fucker. <laughs> Excuse my French, sorry. There's that damn honey jar. That damn honey jar caught my ball. <laughs> so I both of them. Almost broke my leg. I fell off the ball washer. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, dear. Lord. So I like the color. I like the color. Yes. Oh. It's got even a slight wow. red to it. The smell is very caramely and sweet. All right, I gotta, I gotta pay attention and get my shit together here. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'm off on my own show, kids. He is. That's what happens are when we, he drinks beer. Are we nosing? Are we oh, nosing? I've nosed. Yeah, I okay. wanna see what we got here. This is super wow. sweet caramel. That is a nice. That's a. Well, I get. <laughs> I get. Uh, yeah. It's real light. Holy cow. I definitely get not even the, a leg on there. I get definitely get like the cane cane juice. You said there's no corn in here at all. No corn. Just really? barley. Five percent barley. That's amazing. The For as sweet as that smells. Because the corn usually gives it more sweetness, doesn't it? it gives but, it some yeah. sweetness, gives it a little earth tone, you know. I I get a lot of the like I get a lot of candy. 
ton yeah, of candy. Yeah, a lot of candy. I really this. do. Caramel, vanilla, but I get a lot of candy. Almost out. like... I'm not getting any oak out of it. Almost but. like a... Mm -hmm. hmm. A little bit of a root beer almost. Real. Some coconut. Hmm. That's quite... Uh, you know what? That's I, quite different. I'm getting like Coca-Cola. Okay. Cola? I agree maybe, with that. Yeah. I agree maybe with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I'd say that maybe more than root beer. That is what it is. Yeah. It's more of a cola kind of. Hmm. What do you got? Anything on the nose in the in the in the? Uh... Um. So the nose, aroma of citrus, caramel candy, maple sugar, vanilla, oak, hazelnut, spice, and sherry wood. Hmm. I get no oak. I get no hazelnut. I'm still getting the the soda pop the. I think it's soda pop. Caramelized strong. sugar yeah, and I definitely, get, get I'm definitely getting coconut. I don't get any of the coconut. No, I don't get the co. I definitely get caramel and I get the Coke Pepsi smell. All right, kids, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. All right, let's let's taste. try the palate on this thing. On this thing. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Candy store, baby. It is definitely a candy store. Wow, is that sweet? So sweet. Wow, is that freaking good? There, there's a lot going on there um, that I'm trying to pull out. There's like four or five different things that that, that uh, I tasted off the, right out of the gate. Um, I, I do get the I do get a maple finish. Yes, definitely. There's the maple. definitely some, maple. some molasses slash yes, maple molasses, yes. going on. I, I almost that, that's got to be from the rum cast. I I, I I get a lot of maple on the finish. I um. At first, I almost thought I I, I tasted a little cocoa, and then it, it almost went to almost went to like leather. Um, mm. but I couldn't catch it quick enough. But um, I definitely, oh definitely maple syrup. Well, for a rye, that's definitely it. Category of its own. This this is not a typical rye. I get no rye on here <coughs> at all. It is so sweet. Just a little bit of the cinnamon and kind of baking spice, maybe yeah. that you typically have with a rye. But but yeah, otherwise it's very uncharacteristic. What's the, it say for the palate? Palate just says sweet rum, sherry wood, and soft oak. See, I get the same palate and nose on this I don't, one. I don't it get matches. any of the sherry. I mean, maybe that's what yeah, I'm... I'm not getting I any whiny. Out, I don't have any wine. No, no dryness to it. Usually you get sherry, that. you get a little bit of a dryness. People say, well, it could be the oak, but, you know, sometimes sherry's, sherry casts seem to be, a, you know, just you know, just like what they are, sherry. The you know, finish, so. I get um, a little bit of, like, almost ginger, and then it actually has a, just at the very end, a little bit of a... Bitterness, but um, which is interesting after all that sugar you get on the yeah, in it's, the it's, middle. It's definitely wow. a uh, sugar bomb. I um, so now them just kind of sitting here, oh. just kind of going through it. I, I'm starting to get the dryness. I'm starting to get the dryness. I had out one of, of the, the notes I read said to try um, to try a spot of water with it. Okay, so, Karen, we're go gonna ahead. we're gonna drink some of yourself. your COVID water here if you don't mind. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put such a little amount in it. This is amazing to me. This tastes like soda. Just you want you want you want no. water? I think I, I I'm not a fan of adding anything to to what what the product is. I'm not a big fan of that. <clears throat> Every time I do that, I'm completely disappointed. <laughs> so uh, here we go again. So uh, we'll see what happens. Doug, do you want to do a little water in that or not? I did. Okay. So so. Um, I know that this is going to upset me, but anyway, let's try it. Oh, so good. Okay, well, I'm not disappointed. Yeah. You know what I get is a little bit of, like, black licorice almost, like the... Kind of, knocking on the I door. I didn't have that before I put the water in, but... You know, when you get that, yeah, the homemade yeah. kind of uh, Australian... I soft. definitely get, get a ton of maple out of it. Ton of maple, ton of caramel, yeah. and I still get that soda flavor in there. Um, pancake syrup is what I think. Pancake of. Yeah. syrup—that's what I'm talking about. You know, it, um, Belgian waffles. What do we got? It, 
Holy it, it's crap, probably it must be that so with the 95 percent rye that's that adds a lot of dryness so for some reason it, it i don't like sweet whiskey you know we've talked about that like yeah the regular maker's mark to me is too right. sweet and um but while this is sweet there's something that's balanced about it that i like i actually wasn't expecting to like this just you know after some of the reviews i read about it but i i think it's it's spicy it's got a like you said it's a candy candy bomb oh but then gosh. it then it finishes nice and dry it's not i yeah, don't find it dryness, i don't yeah. find it cloying or anything like that so i uh I, I like it. It's good. I think it's, uh, well, all right, kids. All right. Pat Patterson said he's amazed that there's no Cornholio. <laughs> None. No Cornholio. And, Which is uh, odd. Colin Dunbar says it's been a while since he had Angel's Envy, and tonight he has a Keller Pilsner from Treehouse Brewing with a Mezcal back. Mm. I don't know. I can't read this. Del Maguey Chichicapa? Right. That's yeah. What, that's the way uh, I saw it, too. I'm trying. If I could just uh, keep my... So is that uh, Colin? Is that a... Is, yeah, tell us more about that. So, sounds Mezcal makes me think of tequila. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's got a... If, he's has a if he has tequila on the side or if it's part of the beer offering, so... Mm. Jennifer says this is one of her favorite ryes. Uh, smooth, and she gets some oak with it. Colin says you got it. Oh, okay. Wow, I I am like really, really, really liking this. I do too. I like it. I do. I'm, I got I gotta say I am too. So. Sidecar, you screwed up. Yeah, sidecar. <laughs> Keep your ass in New York. That's right. Mm. More more so, angels uh, for us. All right, kids, scale of one to five. I, I mean, go ahead. You want to start? I will. Okay. What's the big G verdict? I'd say it's a solid uh, 3.9. 3.9? 3.9. Yeah. Really? Really? That's all you're giving yeah, it, huh? Well, I mean, that's what for I'm the Whiskey Roundtable, that's a pretty good score. We aren't easy. No, we're not. You know what, Doug? I, I have a number <laughs> in my... <laughs> Is it number one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere in the middle. Uh, no, but, uh, Doug, you know what? I have a number in my head, but I don't want to just blurt it out. So I'm going to okay. let you. So I'm close to Greg, and I can't believe I'm going to give it this, but I am going to give it a 4.1 because I just really like it. I, You know, it's got a lot of complexity, uh, and, um, you know, we've talked about some of those other uh barrel picks that you've had that are mm -hmm. kind of like a candy store um, but all those ones that we've liked have been very well balanced and this is too I don't I don't find it cloying or too much and then it has a nice dry finish so yeah I'm, I'm a fan I, I didn't expect to be but I, I do like it so 4.1 right. okay Karen let's hear it dude uh, this to me is amazing and I gotta go with a 4.5 Oh, 4.5, okay. and you're tough. You're a tough scorer. Too, I so am. I that am. That means you really like this. This so. is so, really, uh, really good. So we have one guest in the audience, and we need to get a score from the guest. Uh, I don't know about a score, but I don't normally like rise, and I really like this. I, I need a number. I Gotta have a number. I can't, can't even give Out a number. Out of scale one to five. I don't want to give him a number. You're gonna, you're gonna go with like a 4.12. I like 4. this for rise. Okay, so, okay. so your score, you're not, your right, score will be right. whatever the average of the three of us is. That's fine. Okay. I just, I don't normally like rye, but I really like this. And this okay. is almost all rye, so that's yeah. interesting. Right. And it does not taste like a rye at all. So I'm, I'm just kind of thinking, I mean, I, maybe I should have a little bit more and see what's going on. So uh, let's see what we got here. Anybody else? I'm still sipping. I'm enjoying it. Well, I'll take a little bit more. Thanks, Back over here. Well, yeah, know. good thing. Good pour right over the nine. keyboard. So I want to burn up a couple thousand dollars laptop. <laughs> it's a 4.1. Yeah. 
divided by three. So she gives it a four point one six 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 six. Four four point one six six. One so I'm gonna get one point four point one point six seven. Pat, yeah. you like that, right? He's a numbers guy. Okay. All right, so wow. that was uh, this is really good. That I makes wanna, me happy. You know, I, we have a a special uh, whiskey wizard coming up. We right? do. We, we do. do have a special whiskey. This wizard. This is kind of the grandest whiskey wizard thus far in terms right. of production because it's my favorite topic of barrel barrel maturation. Mm -hmm. So in our series about the making of whiskey, this is the next step in the process. So we. Last time we talked about distillation, and of course, so now it's time for for barrel maturation. So well, let's get to uh, it. While we while our viewers uh, watch the Whiskey Wizard, we'll enjoy some more of this. We're going to be drinking. Amen. All We're right, kids. Be drinking. We'll see you in a, see you in um, 14, minutes. fourteen minutes and forty seven seconds. All Something right. like that. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Have a good day. Whiskey Wizard. <laughs> It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge and artisan skill and dedication and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. I'm very happy to arrive at this next part of our review of the whiskey making process where we'll cover barrel maturation. And in no other aspect of the craft of making whiskey do intangible and seemingly magical elements come into play as exist with the process taking place where wood meets spirit over many years and many seasonal cycles. Once we have our hard won new make spirit at the right balance of alcohol and flavor compounds, this fresh spirit, also known as White Dog, finally meets the barrel where wood, time, and the elements conspire to transform the mixture into whiskey. Suffice it to say, the maturation process really begins with the making of the barrel. But since the subject of coopering deserves its own segment, we'll save that for some future time. We'll just say that there's no amateur barrel makers. It takes years of sweat at the block, as they say, to develop the necessary expertise. Coopers are a proud, tight-knit lot to this day, and rightly so, because the act of making fine wine and spirit could not be accomplished absent the fruits of their labor. Still, some distilleries own their own cooperages or are using their own in-house, sometimes semi-automated barrel making operations. Here's the barrel assembly equipment in use at Old Forester in their new location in Louisville. For the most part, barrels for whiskey maturation are made from European oak or American white oak. Although it's a bit of a running debate, up to 75% of whiskey's flavor and certainly all of its color comes from its time in the barrel. Bourbon must be aged in brand new oak barrels that have been charred on the inside. In the case of bourbon or rye, it must be in the barrel for a minimum of two years to be considered straight bourbon or rye. And of course, to be a bottled and bond or a bonded whiskey, it must be aged for at least four years. The oak wood contains a compound tylosis that allows it to retain the whiskey without leaking. And it also has a unique internal structure that still allows for some exchange of air to pass between the barrels inside and the external environment. It is this important exchange of air that brings about some additional unique flavor character influenced by the local environment. This fact also is responsible for the evaporative loss of some of the essential liquid from the barrel referred to as the angel's share. Before the barrels are constructed, their planks or staves age in racks outside for up to three years. Again, the natural environment plays a role in the process. Also, consider how the average barrel has about 33 staves. 
Each of these staves likely came from a different oak. Each oak tree lives in its own unique environment, and no two oaks produce wood of the exact same character. Therefore, each of these staves are adding their unique characteristics to the aging that is happening in each individual barrel. This is another factor contributing to the individuality of any single barrel finished whiskey. Typically, before charring, barrels are first toasted in a special toasting oven, which helps break down some components that will add flavor. This toasting caramelizes some of the natural sugars in the wood and removes or chemically alters some unwanted compounds that could add bitter tannins to the whiskey. This toasting is mostly responsible for the vanilla flavors and caramel color of the whiskey. Here is the front end of the toasting oven operation that we saw at Old Forester. Next, the barrels receive a firing of intense, short-duration flame to char the inside of the barrel. There are five levels of char, with five being the most deeply charred. This is known as alligator char. As you can see in this example here, looking at the char on the stave on the right. Here's a brief segment of barrel charring taking place during our time visiting at Old Forester in Louisville. I'm honored. I'll just start doing it now. We're going to char a barrel here at Old Forester. Do you want to press the button this time? You go ahead, honey. You press the button. When he starts it. Yeah. When he gives you the signal. And it starts flashing. So this has been toasted already. So now we're going to char it. Yeah, do we always do the same char level? Uh, we don't technically do the numerical one through five thing, yeah. but it is about a medium. Okay. So I guess it would be a three. Okay. Three or four. Nice. See how we still keep capturing the smoke? You can see here in this bourbon barrel stave how deep the char layer penetrates the wood, about a few millimeters or more. Look also at how you can see this line, showing where the actual spirit penetrated the wood during its expansion over the hot summers and day-night cycles. Next, the barrels are filled with spirit and moved to the rickhouse where they will begin their long sleep, metamorphosizing through the days and nights, the seasons and the years, into that magical thing called whiskey. As the season warms, the spirit expands further into the wood, and as we said, it passes through the char, the carbon layer, which filters out more undesirable flavor compounds. As the outside climate cools, the liquid contracts, bringing the dissolved, mellowing flavor and color compounds from the wood along with it. This is why the more time a whiskey spends in barrel maturation, the more complex, richer, and smoother it becomes. But as many experts note, whiskey can overstay its welcome in the barrel. And at some point after many years, a point may be reached whereby more time may actually begin to fade a whiskey from its pinnacle of perfection. One cannot talk about the maturation process without talking about the impact of the aging warehouse known as the Rick House. After the ricks or racks upon which the barrels of whiskey will rest during their long sleep. These buildings for aging a whiskey can be constructed of stone, brick, wood, or metal, each lending its influence upon the conditions inside. Some have lots of windows or opening, or while others have very few. Most have multiple levels, 
so the barrels age in different microclimates depending on their location and elevation within the rick house. The barrels high up in the building experience the overall warmest conditions, while the floor level barrels tend to have the coolest aging environment. This is another reason distillers often blend barrels for greater consistency of the finished spirit. Barrels in cooler locations are often selected to age for longer periods. This is also why Scotch whiskey generally must age much longer due to the considerably cooler and less variable Scottish climate. Master distillers and experienced warehouse masters know where the sweet spots are in each rickhouse for making their single barrel selections, small batches, and specialty releases. One exception in rickhouse design is Four Roses Distillery that now uses only single level aging houses. This provides less environmental variation by design, but also requires a less efficient use of real estate and I assume a higher production cost. Also, the new aging house at the Old Forester Louisville location is inside and is kept under comparatively controlled and consistently maintained conditions. It will be interesting to see how these whiskeys compare to those receiving the normal ebb and flow of the variable Kentucky seasons. I would assume these indoor whiskeys will need to age longer than their outdoor cousins. Buffalo Trace has a special aging house known as Rick House X, where sophisticated capabilities exist for unique experimentation. Research is now underway there in pursuit of the perfect barrel of aged bourbon whiskey. I hope we can get more information and perhaps even do a future episode on this research facility. Realize also that when the spirit contracts from the wood, it pulls the mellowed barrel contribution with it. And also the contraction pulls air into the barrel from the outside. This is where some of the unique qualities of the local environment make their way into the whiskey. One can especially note this in Scottish whiskeys. Consider for example, an Isla whiskey made and aged on Scotland's west coast where the spray from rough seas and the cool salt air find their way into the barrel subtly over many years of silent waiting, bathed in the sound of crashing waves and calling seabirds. Along with the influence of the local peat used for kilning the malted barley, Isla whiskies always include aromas and tastes reminiscent of a fresh sea breeze, and this is why they are one of my personal favorites. And as the spirit expands back into the wood of the barrel, air from the inside of the barrel is also released back to the outside, carrying some of the angels share with it. If you've ever been inside a Rick house, you know exactly what this means. The aroma can be downright intoxicating. As a whiskey fan, it's hard not to imagine that a certain amount of magic is happening deep inside the Rick House in the wee lonely hour for the temperamental sprites and nymphs of whiskey creation dance and go about their secret work, bringing forth the best of the wood and elements and making the utmost out of what potential there was in the original distilled product. So, distilling a great spirit is only half the battle. Then it takes years of carefully executed barrel aging to allow the marriage of spirit, conditioned oak, and the local environment to work their magic in creating this marvel we call whiskey. This is one of the things I love about whiskey. You can't rush whiskey as there's no way to purchase time. In the barrel, over time, good spirit becomes great whiskey. Some makers have tried, but you just can't get around it. Good whiskey is not for shooting or slamming down with a beer. It's for taking time out and enjoying it with friends. And sharing whiskey is about building relationships. Like whiskey itself, these things can't be rushed and require us to take a respite from all the challenge and bustle of modern life. And that is, of course, a great thing. While many aspects of barrel maturation do seem very close to it, 
Whiskey making does not actually take magic or nymphs or sprites, but a well-made whiskey, as we all have no doubt observed, just tastes that way. Somewhere down the road, I'd like to cover the chemistry behind the flavor and aroma in whiskey. But a lot of research is required for that, so just know that is currently underway. Once the whiskey is ready to come out of the barrel, there are a few other final steps in the commercial whiskey making process that we'll conclude with next time. I'm Doug Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Round Table, and now back to the live show. Doug, right. I just have to say, after that girl danced in front of the barrels, your face, you were just like... <sighs> Did you have a pair of underwear well, yeah. in your head? I, don't, I swear you had a pair of underwear on your head. You know, as I said, I, it doesn't take sprites or nymphs, but it, nymphs? it's certainly an interesting concept. Uh, yeah, it helps. Bring them nymphs over to our house. <laughs> Meanwhile, while, while you were all enjoying... The Whiskey Wizard. We were enjoying more Angels Envy Rye. And uh, and it's worthy. It is worthy. Absolutely. Good stuff. Very nice. Good so stuff. I love, so you actually were at um, Old Forester mm -hmm. and you, you like pressed the button to Shauna make... actually pressed the button to uh, fire up that barrel that we saw. That is so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, that was neat. We were there on a Friday morning, like it was Good Friday, a couple last years year. ago. Yeah. Was it last year? 19. And uh, we got there like 11 a.m. and uh, we were one of the first tours and there was nobody but us. And so it was really cool. We got to, you know, I said, can we, can we fire up a barrel? And he's like, oh, sure. You know. Awesome. It was, it was fantastic. It was a it was a great uh, day there at uh, Old Forester. They were really nice, and uh, that's a great tour. I recommend if you're in Louisville, stop in and, and do that. So they have a really nice new distillery there, right in downtown Louisville. And it, we just had a blast. So I never imagined the outside of the barrel was as clean and oaky and brandy, yeah, as brandy it was. Beer. I you brandy know beer. I I thought they kind of I guess I know they toasted the inside, but I thought there was like more to the whole barrel. Well, well when they make it, of course, that's that's just American white oak. But then they put it in that toasting oven for I don't know how many hours, but several hours at at you know two two eighty or something like that. So just to toast all the 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 toasting is very important for what they said because it. It converts a lot of those sugars, or it breaks down a lot of that kind of the natural longer chain sugars in the wood to shorter chains. So that helps make it easier for some of those flavors to impart themselves on the whiskey. So, um, and of course, charring is that helps with that whole the filtering of the whiskey. Yeah. yeah, the whiskey as it goes in and out of the wood. So that was really cool. It, it was, was really cool. Yeah, I find that really, really interesting. Yeah, barrel maturation is, I think, the, you know, it's one of the key parts, obviously, of whiskey making. So um, not to minimize the whole mashing process, which is also crucial, because if you don't put something good in the barrel, uh, and you don't have something good to distill, put something good sure. in the barrel, you know, the results aren't going to be good. But Right. But when you take a really, when you take a good, uh, spirit, put it in a barrel, you can come up with a great whiskey. So, All right, so what kind of news do we have happening? Well, if you want to start off, I, if not, hang on, I'll oh, start off, hang on. You go ahead. Sorry, apologize. I'm just going to sit back not and prepared. drink my angels, Andy. <laughs> okay, excuse me, because I did not uh, practice my news. Apologize. New Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Bourbon. Is coming from Heaven Hill. All right. Heaven Hill has announced the release of Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, arriving on the shelves uh, in time for uh, Bourbon Heritage Month. Uh, the new release will begin with Elijah Craig Small Batch Bourbon aged to maturity in a standard charred oak barrel. Then we just talked about. We just mm -hmm. talked about that. All right. 
Uh, the bourbon is uh, then transferred to a uh, barrel proof to a second toasted flash charred barrel with 18 month air dried staves. That's going to be interesting. We talked about that as well yes, on we the did. last episode of the Whiskey Wizard. Yep. Uh, independent stave company uh, like the flagship Elijah Craig Bourbon and the new Elijah Craig Rye. All right. Uh, the, the new Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel is, is bottled at 94 proof. That's awesome. That's, uh, that's a perfect proof for me right there, yeah. 94. Uh, the uh, extensive research development process in a final barrel toast profile uh, four dark sugar flavors within the wood to create a balance of smokiness and sweetness after months of finishing, uh, said the distiller press release. Um, the result taste is big, rich, and complex with spice and pepper notes uh, fade into milk chocolate with a hint of smoke as the finish lingers with chocolate and baking spice. That sounds fantastic. Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Homage to uh, its namesake's pioneering spirit <clears throat> as the first to char oak barrels through uh, innovation in the uh, barrel aging process, said Max uh, Stefka, Elijah Craig senior brand manager. In a press release, it was a pleasure uh, partnering with the independent stave company to create custom toast profile and char level design to the best complement, fully matured Elijah Craig. Twice barreled is the uh, nonced flavor toasted barrel showcases a straight bourbon process unique to the marketplace. Uh, Elijah Craig barrel, uh, toasted barrel bourbon will uh, launch nationally this September, $50. Okay. All right. You think it's Too coming bad. to Ohio? I think it will come to Ohio. Okay. I really do because, I mean, we, we have... Um, a lot of Elijah Craig on the shelves. We do. And we yep. do. So uh, I think we will see it here in Ohio. Yeah. I hope so. so. It sounds interesting. So I that, don't know if we'll see this one. But uh, did you have anything else, Chris? That's all I have. Okay. But I think I think I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm uh, I feel pretty confident You're that optimistic, um, are you? I am. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty confident that uh, we're going to see that we're going to see that bottle in Ohio. I mean, they, they have, we have 18 year that you can get in Ohio right. on limited release different things. I see all that stuff on the Cleveland Burma Co-op. I think that we're, I think we will see that. I really do. I really, really do. Well, I don't know exactly when we'll see this one. Still Austin Whiskey Company, um, brand new distillery out of Austin, Texas, launches a flagship straight bourbon whiskey. And uh, the homegrown distillery is situated in the heart of South Austin. And they, um, they released their first high-rise straight bourbon whiskey featuring grains that are 100% grown by Texas farmers. And so they have kind of that whole um, kind of homegrown attitude towards this particular, uh, well, this all their whiskey offerings. So they, uh, Still Austin's master blender, Nancy Fraley, who's famous for her peerless ability to detect flavor notes as the nose offers delightful aromas of ripe tropical fruits such as pineapple, banana, papaya, mango, toasted, nut, toasted coconut shavings, and s'mores with melted milk, chocolate, and caramelized marshmallow. That sounds like a so, tough salad I mean, right there. That's a candy bomb sounding. <laughs> so, um, oh dear. Anyway. Uh, anyway, moving on. Toss. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Move along, kids. <laughs> Move along. Um, so anyway, again, their grain to glass, grain to glass philosophy is uh, kind of what their their um, they were going for when they found it in 2015, and um, so that sounds like an uh, interesting one. It'll probably have a, a retail. Price of about forty-five dollars a bottle. We will start off with. Um, it just came out this month uh, with offerings in, in the Texas area, but we'll be branching out throughout the United States soon. So, hopefully, some more on that. Also, another new uh, distillery, Blue Note Bourbon, uh, out of Memphis, Tennessee, launches Blue Note Juke Joint. Um, from BR Distilling Company. 
and uh, it's their newest iteration under its award-winning Blue Note bourbon product line. So the new bourbon release is designed to complement the Blue Note bourbon expressions already on the market by offering imbibers an easy drinking everyday bourbon that is perfect for any occasion. So it's 93 proof, uh, retail about $50, um, and looks like will soon be available um, throughout the United States. So um, we can be looking forward to that from BR Distilling. And lastly, Wild Turkey uh, announced, uh, whoop, whoop. yes, uh, <laughs> give them the bird. Wild Turkey has announced a new uh, rare breed rye release, a blend of uh, four, six, and eight year old non-chill filtered ryes. Uh, it's Barrel proof, meaning that's bottled directly from the barrels without adding a single drop of water. Enjoyed neat on the rocks or in cocktails. The flavor profile of the 112.2 proof rare breed ride is nothing short of enticing. Sweet caramel apple gives way to complex layers of honey, vanilla rye, grain spice, and charred oak with a smooth finish with spices, baking spices mingling with fruit and a pleasant fading warmth. So uh, maybe that's one that we would like to feature in um, November for our Wild Turkey Month. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So we'll have to try to acquire some of that. How many bottles do you have, Rick? No rise yet, but... No, it was released this week. You, I'm surprised you don't have at least a few. <laughs> Killing me. No, but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled, that's for sure. I'm yeah, sure, so I'm that's, sure one we wanna, somewhere. that's one we'll want to do on the show. Bottle or sure. two, you never know. Yeah. So that's that's all we have for news. So some, um, some new releases from outside of uh, Kentucky, um, and so a couple of good ones from some distillers we know well. So, all right, all you cigar smokers out there, um, uh, on the uh, let me uh, get the date here. Apologize. Um, oh my goodness, I can't even see. August fifteenth, we're doing a uh, we're doing a roll, uh, cigar roll at uh, Royal Havana Cigars, and uh, you guys, any of you cigar smokers, come on down at Royal Havana Cigars, three eight four four eight Lakeshore Boulevard, Willoughby, Ohio. Uh, come check us out for our cigar rolls, and uh, on the fifteenth, which is a Sunday, it's a golf outing. Uh, you can still uh, apply for the golf if you want to, or you can still. Come for the food. It's going to be sponsored by Roland Smoke Barbecue. Whoop, whoop. So Roland Smoke Barbecue will be doing the food there, and uh, I'm hoping to see a bunch of people that uh, we haven't met before from the co-op or other people that watch the show that uh, um, want to come and hang out and, and that like cigars and do our thing. So Roland Smoke Barbecue on on the uh, 15th, or 16th, excuse me, on the sixth, Sunday the 16th. Uh, so we're we're uh, we did it last year. We had a great time. It was a great time. Uh, we we. You know, we cooked for 125 people. There was 60, 70 people there, and all the food was gone. So uh, come on down and enjoy Great. yourselves. Uh, I don't know what the cost is off, off the top of my head, but, again, roll and smoke barbecue. So uh, we'll catch you guys later. All right. Looking forward to it. Yep, absolutely. So remember that uh, per our tradition, um, August will be single malt scotch whiskey month here on the Whiskey Roundtable. And I uh, think we'll try to get Chris in here, as we said, sometime in August to help us with that. And uh, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page right. if you've not already. And follow us on Facebook if you have any questions or comments. Or if you want to be a guest on the show, uh, please email us directly at thewhiskeyroundtable at gmail.com. Or our Facebook page. Or our Facebook page. Um, you know how to get a hold of us. Let us know. All right. That's awesome. Right. Awesome. So, um, I have a closing quote today. Oh, oh please. And the these. show. These are my favorite. And you were talking about uh, an outing, so this fits with that. Um, this quote comes from the great Dean Martin. That's All my right. favorite. And he said, when I drink, I don't drive. I don't even putt. <laughs> Boy. So long, everybody. <laughs> Dino. All right. We'll see you next. Watching. We'll see you next week as we begin Scotch Whiskey Month.
All right, everyone, please be safe. All right, we're your hosts, Big G. Kieran Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. See you next week. Good night, all. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down. Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts, cause nothing knows a pain like bourbon or scotch. Oh no. Oh no, no. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money trying therapy. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you. Tennessee. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the hell?